Hello there, dear hunter. What? Oh, I see. The task for knowledge and understanding of this world you have is much bolder and stronger than those beasts around us. I shall indulge into your questions and inquiries about this world we are paying the price in. Many moons ago, a man named German would rise to the task of the beast problem. German redesigned common clothing to provide better defense against the beast's claws and also created the burial blade, a unique weapon capable of transforming during battle to cater to German's need for a short or long weapon. German's work was so admired as well as effective that his burial blade would become the basis for all hunter armament technology, later known as trick weapons. German was also a formidable fighter whose school of thought would become mandatory in any hunter's fighting style when facing the horrors of the hunt. Rumours has it that German was hired by the Healing Church to work in the workshop due to his role as an inventor, since his workplace is directly beneath the Healing Church's Whedon Chapel. German worked in the workshop, presumably until his death. He took many apprentices, who all did his duty in his honour, and may well have died long ago. The bone in the workshop graveyard was one of such apprentices, who had mastered the art of quickening allowing him to move at incredible speeds. Periodically, that doll of his can be seen mourning at the same grave from which the bone is retrieved, leading some to speculate that this hunter was incredibly powerful and was one of the few to get close to defeating one of the Great Ones, making it possible that he was a viable replacement to take German's place. Now the Healing Church has pursued a strange goal for a long, long time, a goal that has been hidden from all but the highest of rank among them, to summon or harness the power of the so-called Great Ones, beings not of this world, powerful enough to be seen as gods. They were here, in the labyrinth, long ago. They appear to be much closer than you'd think at Bergenwirth. Foolish men were sent into the labyrinth and an academy was built to understand the strange discoveries inside, generally called it the truth. It seems the truth is a terrible thing, slowly breaking the mind of anyone who delves too deeply. Awful things happened at Beigenwirth, and as a result, the church closed off not only the academy, but the entire forest, calling it forbidden. Whether or not the Great Ones are actually gods, or just higher levels of beings, is inconsequential. The question itself is entirely academic. The important thing is, they exist. They have an influence on the world. They appear to be ageless, but they can be killed. Their powers are strange things, often involving teleportation, or energy, or things that our world cannot do. Even perceiving the Great Ones properly requires great amounts of insight, something Master Willem tried to do at his own cost. One of their number has transcended even the others, to the point that he no longer has a physical body, but instead is just a voice and an influence. He is very powerful and has become sort of timeless, thus potentially making him the most powerful, yet the most indirect, of the Great Ones. Humans have been able to contact them through the use of phantasm, little invertebrates found in the labyrinth. But the leaders of the Healing Church, the choir, differentiate themselves from the rest of the members of the Church as they received teachings directly from Ebrietas. Ebrietas is the daughter of the cosmos, a celestial being who emerged from the depth of the old labyrinth and acted as a source of knowledge to the healing church with seemingly no ill will, thus furthering the notion that the Great Ones are sympathetic to us humans. 
Not only did Ebrietas grant members of the choir profound knowledge, but she also further convinced them that they could commune with the Great Ones and learn the eldritch truth. They believed they could ascend to the cosmos, or at least make contact with it. And it came in a sudden and unexpected realization that perhaps while their feet were rooted to the ground, the cosmos was not immeasurably far away, but right above their heads. Together with Ebrietas, the choir worked tirelessly to understand the Great One's truth. Be weary on your travels, dear hunter. On the search for knowledge and truth may just cost you your life, or even worse, your sanity, until we meet again under the pale moon. Dear hunter, farewell. <laughs>